Hey guys, it's Jonna from Tutoren. Um, one of the things that I get requests for a lot are uh, pediatric dosages and calculations. So we're gonna look at some PD math. Um, let's put D and C. Now, something to remember, pediatric math, a pediatric dose and calculations is not different than regular. The only thing is that you have to consider the weight. And that's really important when you're doing pediatric math is that everything's gonna be based off of the child's weight. And of course, that means weight in kilograms. So the type of questions that you get, largely are gonna be the same type of questions that you would see in adult med surge. So as an example, let's say that we have a question that asks you, um, you know, the doctor's order is gonna be for 50 milligrams of an antibiotic. And on hand, you have 175 milligrams per three mLs of that antibiotic. And it wants to know how much are you gonna give? How many mLs are you gonna give? Well, in a regular adult world, right, you would just do dose over half, I'll put that here, or desired over half times amount. And that's a formula that I use. Some of you may know dimensional analysis and that's what you're familiar with. By all means, whatever you're familiar with, whatever you're comfortable with using, use that. I'm most comfortable with using and teaching regular dose over half times amount. So here's our dose or desired amount. Here's what we have. And we need to try to figure out how much we give. There's our amount. So in a regular adult world, right, where we don't have to take into consideration the weight, we would just do the desired 50 milligrams divided by what we have times the amount. So then the formula turns into, I'll put it here, 50 divided by 175 times three. So if we whip out our calculators, or if you, you're old school and you still like to do it in the math in your head, that's great. So we just do 50 divided by 175 times three, and we get 0 0.857. If we round it, we get 0 0.86. If we rounded that, we get 0 0.9, right? So that's how we would do it. Now with pediatric math, we just have one more thing in the equation we have to consider the weight. So for instance, if we had the same exact question, but now we're dealing with PD, right? And let's say that the question becomes 50 milligrams per kilogram. And we know that the child weighs, let's say weighs 62, uh, Actually, let's do pounds so I can make you convert. 62 pounds. So now we have to take that into consideration. So first thing is that we always have to convert our pounds into kilograms. And to do that, we just divide by 2.2. So this becomes 28.2 kilograms. If we were going from kilograms to pounds, we would just multiply it by 2.2. So now the question says we have to get 50 milligrams per kilogram. So in order to do that, what do we have to do? We have to multiply 50 times the kilograms, times 28.2. So 50 times 28.2 gives me, let's put this up here, 1410. Now on hand, I have 175 milligrams per uh, three ml. So again, we'll just go back to our division. Divide by 175 times three, and what do we get? Go ahead and try that math. We would get 24.17 mLs, which would be a heck of a whole lot of mLs to make a child drink. And again, I'm just making up these numbers and calculations. So if they're large amount of numbers, that's just because we're making it up for the sake of knowing how to do the math. Not very difficult. We just always need to keep in mind our um, calculations as far as math and uh, converting pounds to kilograms when necessary, and just a regular conversion. None of that changed with uh, peds. Um, one of the things that we see in pediatrics that we don't see in adults when we're learning it in nursing school is our maintenance fluid requirements. And that is something important that I'll make sure that we go over uh, so you can see what that looks like. So when we're talking about, you're in pediatrics, and you're talking about dehydration and rehydrating the patient, we learn about maintenance fluid requirements. So that's how much fluid are we going to give to this pediatric patient 
and a 24 hour period to rehydrate them. There's a formula for that. We give 100 mLs per kilogram for up to the first 10 kilos, and then we'll get 50 mLs per kilogram for the second set of uh, 10 kilos. I'll write that separately so you can see it in just a minute. And then we'll give 20 mLs per kilogram for everything that's left over or remaining. So what does this mean? That for your first 10, so up to 10 kilograms, it's 100 mLs per kilo. And then for your second 10, which would bring you to 20, right? We give, so let's say 11 to 20 kilograms. And then everything after 20 kilograms, which would be 21, we give 20 mLs. So here's our example of that. Let's say we have a patient that weighs 30 kilograms. So our first set of 10, I'm going to give 100 mLs. My second set of 10, and this is kilos, right? I'm going to give 50 mLs. And then what's remaining, I'm going to give 20. So here's 10, here's 20, and now 30. I have 10 kilos remaining. So this would be 1,000, this would be 500, and 20 times 10 would be 200. So the maintenance fluid requirements for 24 hour period for this pediatric patient would be 1,700 mLs. Okay, so let's try another number. Let's try something smaller. And I'll delete these and delete those. So let's say that our patient weighs eight kilos. So for our, up to our first 10, we give 100. So in this case, I only have eight. I don't have anything remaining past that. I don't have anything remaining past that. So I just do 100 times eight, gives me 800. And their daily fluid requirements for this patient would be 800 mLs. Making sense? Let's try another one. Let's delete these. Uh, let's say we have a patient that weighs 43 kilos. Whoa, let's make that 43 a little better looking. 43. Okay, so, so the first set of 10 gets 100. Our second set of 10 gets 50. And what's remaining gets 20. So I have 1,000 mLs for our first set of 10. Right, so I take 10 kilos off of that. Now my second set of 10, I multiply that, get 500. So that's 10 kilos, 20 kilos, right? Because I'm taking it from this number. And whatever is remaining is going to get 20. So if this is 20 kilos, I have 23 kilos left to give me 43 kilos. So 20 times 23 gives me 460. If I add this all up, I get 1960. So this patient's gonna get 1,960 mLs for their 24 hour period maintenance fluid requirement. Make sense? Easy, right? So just keep practicing that. Remember, big thing with PD math, what do we have to do? Know the weight, make sure we know our conversions. Everything else is the same. If you get questions along the lines of um, safe ranges, Again, this is something that we would apply in the adult world, except we just need to make sure that we take into consideration that pediatric weight. But maintenance fluid requirements, I recognize, is something that can be a little bit confusing. So I hope this helps clears it up for you and uh, make sure that you practice so you are comfortable in using it and you have this committed down to your skill.